YouTube and welcome to Psy Prime Productions. I'm here to help enhance your tabletop gaming experience. So if you missed the big hullabaloo last week as of the posting of this video, Paizo made a bunch of announcements. And I mean like a huge amount. They announced which one of their 20 gods was going to bite the bullet, talked about a slew of new releases, new character options, the whole thing. And I did a video on that. And then like a day later, they did it all again. So yeah, less than 24 hours after their big live stream talking about all of the War of the Immortals stuff, they did a second big live stream about even more releases. Now this second live stream was about more immediate releases that are coming out soon, like the Howl of the Wild book, which will be coming out at the end of May 2024. But here's the thing, so many people were wrapped up in the whole War of the Immortals slash God's Reign stuff that this second live stream kind of flew under the radar. And that's a shame because there's a lot of good stuff in here too, so let's go over it. The live stream starts off with an explanation about the Howl of the Wild book. James talks about how the Howl of the Wild is the latest in a series of books that explore how the monsters interact with the world of Galarian. There was Book of the Dead for Undead, Rage of Elements for Elementals, and now Howl of the Wild for Beasts, Animals, and presumably Plants, though he doesn't say that explicitly. Like all recent Pathfinder source books, Howl of the Wild will be told in a narrative fashion, where there will be notes from a research team of natural philosophers, or what we would call zoologists and botanists. In other words, we learn about the natural world through their observations as a sort of half-novel, half-research journal. I like this style of writing. I fell in love with it with the Treasure Vault book, and I'm glad Paizo is continuing to use it. Anyway, this research team catalogs nature as they look for the fabled Four Wardens of the Wild, or Mythical Guardians of Nature. Now on to the particulars of this book. It is written from the perspective of Barenthet, an Irukshi or lizard folk scholar. He's one of seven members of the research team. Oh, uh, collectively, the research team have an entire airship to themselves called the Zoetrope. Side note, the name Zoetrope is actually the name for those old-timey spinning discs that make it look like something's moving. The early Zoetropes were mostly about animals running and such, which is probably the tie-in to the beasts theme. Anyway, the writers of the book apparently spent a lot of time fleshing out the zoetrope as it has a menagerie on top for land animal specimens and a large water tank on bottom for aquatic specimens, as well as a couple crew members. Now, this isn't new information, but in case you didn't know, Howl of the Wild will introduce six new ancestries that you can play as, and all of them are on the crew of the zoetrope. And yes, one of them, the navigator Lythea, is a merfolk. The other ancestries are a minotaur, represented by this scribe named Charikla, a centaur, represented by Talero the scout, an athamaru, or fishman, represented by Grefu the cook, awakened animals, represented by Dr. Palm, an awakened sand badger, and Serki, a brand new insectile race, represented by this mechanic whose name is, quote, whose antennas are askew, unquote. From what I've heard from my friends and other people online, players seem most excited about the Awakened Animal Ancestry, as that adds a lot of fun character possibilities, but let me know in the comments below what ancestry you are excited for. The book is said to be written with a sort of wonder for the natural world and includes in-universe illustrations by the crew of the Zoetrope, including this illustration of a Bigfoot-like monster called a Ghost Ape. The ghost ape can phase between the material world and the ethereal plane as depicted in this illustration. Of course, there will be stat blocks for monsters too, but James Jacobs said that many of these stat blocks will be accompanied by Barenthet's writings or Churikla's illustrations, or maybe both. Oh, fun story, this little guy is called a rift chameleon and its stomach leads to the ethereal plane and acts as kind of like a bag of holding. It literally has an almost bottomless stomach. As for character options beyond ancestries, Howl of the Wild is said to have new witch patrons, three of them to be specific. They are all primal, and they are called the Devourer of Decay, Ripple in the Deep, and Whisper of Wings. They were not elaborated on, but it sounds like the last two are water and air related, respectively. 
Oh, and there's a new archetype called Claw Dancer that focuses on natural attacks, particularly claw attacks for hands and talon attacks for feet. The interesting thing about this archetype is that they get two stances. One is a stance for claw attacks, and one is a stance for talon attacks, and certain combat actions may automatically switch you between the two stances. That sounds really fun, and like it could be great if you are into highly technical characters. This particular art depicts the spinning stand activity, which lets you stand up and attack. There's also another archetype that is about natural attacks called the Winged Warrior, but it uses wings instead of claws. But I know what you're asking. What if you don't have a claw or talon attack or don't have wings? No problem. The book will introduce grafts, which sounds like items that will do things like give you natural attacks, a tail, wings, or gills, just to name a few. Now, Grafts exist in other Paizo properties like Starfinder, but this is their first appearance in Pathfinder 2e. A few other class options or archetypes were quickly glossed over. The Swarm Keeper keeps swarms of creatures and can use them to attack, kind of like Shino from Naruto, I guess? There's also the Animal Mimic that can use other monster abilities, kind of like the Blue Mage from Final Fantasy. Lastly, there's an archetype around were creatures that presumably center around getting were creature abilities in a way that doesn't completely break the game. Looking at you, Dungeons and Dragons. Now, these were previously talked about in other sources, but were news to me. They do play a clip of the new Wardens of Wildwood Adventure Path that explains the context of the AP. Wardens of Wildwood is an adventure path coming out before the War of the Immortals adventure path called Curtain Call. I'll link the trailer for the Wardens of Wildwood by itself in the description below. It's short, less than two minutes long. Moving off of Howl of the Wild, the next subject was the upcoming Starfinder 2nd Edition. Starfinder, of course, is Paizo's futuristic space fantasy setting. It takes place in the same universe as Pathfinder, but years in the future where interstellar travel is commonplace. Paizo has been releasing snippets of the Starfinder 2nd Edition playtest called the Field Test, with information on the first five levels of some classes and some new ancestries. The most recent playtest was for the Envoy, but there are also playtests for the Mystic and Soldier out there. I'll link them in the description of this video so you can go read them. There's some good stuff in there, and I do want to do a video about them at some point. Dustin Knight, a developer for Starfinder 2nd Edition, talked about how they already modified the Envoy from the playtest release that happened relatively recently, so if you're into Starfinder, I'd see if you could get a playtest going. Paizo appears to be listening. In new news, Starfinder Field Test number 5 will be released early in May and will be a combat encounter with enemy stat blocks that people will actually be able to play and give feedback on, so check that out if interested. Oh, and in the live stream they did a big joke about the Starfinder The Gap book. If you don't know, in Starfinder, The Gap is a stretch of time that has been wiped clean of all information. There are no digital records, no written records, and everyone's specific memories were erased. Like, one day people just woke up and would still know how to do their job, but couldn't remember where they learned how to do it, or even what they did yesterday. Kinda like, what happened to Aerodin is the big question in Pathfinder, what's the deal with the gap is kind of the big question of Starfinder. Anyway, as an April Fool's joke, Paizo released a book called The Gap. It, quote, has all the information known about The Gap, unquote. It's, it's, it's just a blank notebook with the Starfinder The Gap hardcover on it. It's, it's pretty funny. Oh, also there's the new Starfinder weapon called the Moo Whip. It's a can of spray cheese, except the cheese is a string of nanites that acts as a whip because Dustin Knight laughed over a typo when typing the word Mono Whip. Anyway, next up was the discussion of Abomination Vaults for D&D 5e. For those who don't know, Abomination Vaults is an adventure path that goes from levels 1 to 10. Originally, it was a Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure path that I've actually run for players all the way through. Anyway, they're coming out with a conversion of it for D&D 5th Edition. They actually announced this before the OGL scandal came out last year, and I was surprised that they were following through with it in the wake of that OGL scandal. But apparently it's on the way, so if you're a D&D player and you want to run a 1-10 to game that is a mega dungeon with a surprisingly good story behind it, check it out.
Now, after the Abomination Vault section was the Q&A for the live stream, there were a lot of questions and answers, but few were particularly newsworthy. Any newsworthy bits I pretty much already covered in the relevant sections. There was a joke about making a Phoenix Wright-style lawyer that can object as a reaction, and as a guy who made a paralegal war priest of Abdar in Pathfinder 1st Edition, I approve. Oh, one minor bit of news, it looks like the Starfinder 2nd Edition playtest book due out in July of 2024 will not have the Starfinder class archetypes. In the word of Dustin Knight, we are focusing on getting the chassis of the base classes down first before focusing on archetypes. Anyway, that was about it for the live stream. I hope I was able to digest this almost one and a half hour live stream into something a bit more manageable. And remember, if your Howl of the Wild players need to confront some evil lumberjacks, consider my book, The NPC Omnibus, filled with 36 NPC stat blocks from creature levels negative 1 to 10. Check it out at DriveThruRPG or PathfinderInfinite.com and leave a review if it's not too much trouble. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe so both me and YouTube know that you'd like to see more of this kind of content. Thank you, good luck, and happy gaming!